Tyler State Park. 17,000 acres of land. More than 23 miles of trails. It is located in the beautiful Bucks County. The area was originally inhabited by Lenny Lenape Indians, also known as Delaware Indians. It became one of the tracts purchased from them by William Penn in 1682, who sold parcels of land to colonists that lived on and farmed these lands. Before the area became known as a Tyler State Park, it was a rich farmland. 21 farms in all. Only several of these farmhouses and barns remain. They stand there as fine examples of early rural Pennsylvania farm dwellings. In 1919, George Tyler, a man of great wealth, a banker, sportsman, and philanthropist, made his first purchase of what would become an expansive Tyler estate, the Solly Farm. It served as a weekend country getaway for him and his wife, Stella Elkins Tyler. The house was built around 1770 by John Twining. It stayed in the Twining family for over 100 years, until Edward Atkins bought it in 1872 and sold it in 1919 to the Tylers. In 1930, Tylers began construction of their new Bucks County home, the Tyler Hall. George Tyler named it the Indian Council Rock, after the rocky cliff behind the mansion that was said to be used as a meeting place for Indian tribal councils. The mansion consisted of a total of 60 rooms, more than 20 fireplaces, Dutch room, sprawling exotic gardens, tennis courts, a greenhouse, and a swimming pool. The stones used for the cobblestone courtyard was brought from the dismantled Callowhill Street in Philadelphia. More than 40 servants staffed the Tyler estate. Many of them lived on the estate grounds in these cottages. During the next decade after the purchase of Solly Homestead, Tylers have purchased the remaining 20. They called them the Nishamini Farms. Besides the crops, they raised poultry, pheasants, sheep, pigs, and ran one of the finest herds of Ayrshire dairy cattle in the country. Stella Elkins Tyler, the granddaughter of business tycoon William Elkins, grew up in Elkins Park. She was a strong supporter of the arts and inspiring sculptor. Many of her sculptures are displayed in the mansion's garden today. Stella had a strong connection with Temple University. By donating her Cheltenham estate, she helped to start the Tyler School of Fine Arts of Temple University. George Tyler died in 1947. In 1962, Stella Tyler bequeathed the entire Tyler estate to Temple University and moved back to her old home at Chestnut Hill. She died a year later at the age of 79. In 1964, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania purchased the property, and in 1965 Bucks County purchased the mansion and 200 acres of land for the construction of the community college. The mansion now serves as the administration building of the Bucks County Community College. A massive barn built in a colonial revival style were the Tyler Stables. Built in about 1922, it housed Tyler's 25 horses. It also had living quarters on either side of the stables for the workers that tended to the horses. The hay trolley is still visible at the barn croft. From here, George Tyler would host regular fox hunts for the Huntingdon Valley Hunt Club. It is now the home of Tyler Park Center for the Arts. Along the Swamp Road, sits this magnificent dwelling, once known as Pine Grove Farm. In mid-1850s, Oliver Schofield's family operated an ornamental tree farm, thus giving it a name Pine Grove Farm. Oliver and his wife Mary Schofield were Quakers and devout abolitionists. One day, a young runaway slave woman showed up on their doorstep. Schofields gave the young woman a safe haven, treated her, and drove her to a safe place. When her master arrived at Pine Grove Farm, he ransacked Schofield home looking for a girl and threatened the occupants. This incident deeply affected young Martha Schofield who was only a teenager at the time. She began to teach slaves to read and write. At the age of 18, she taught in Long Island. In 1865, when Martha was 26, she moved to Adisto Island, near Charleston, answering President Abraham Lincoln's call to help emancipated slaves and those displaced by the war. 
Two years later, using her life savings she founded the Schofield Colored Industrial School. In 1951, it became known as the Martha Schofield High School. Martha Schofield devoted her life to liberty, desegregation, and education of African Americans, right up until her death at 77. She died in her sleep, on the eve of her 77th birthday. The original Schofield Ford covered bridge was built in 1873, when the residents of Newtown and Northampton petitioned to build a bridge to connect their two communities. The bridge stood for 118 years, until it was destroyed by fire set by unknown arsonists in 1991. In 1997, using the authentic materials and methods, a group of concerned citizens and skilled workers rebuilt the bridge. Today, the bridge is accessible by foot or horseback. Along the Mill Dairy Trail sits the John Cooper House. The date stone reads 1775, a year before America would declare its independence. Warner Thompson was the last owner of the house before selling it to George Tyler. The house that stood near this barn was built around 1790 by Thomas Buckman. It was a grand mansion, perhaps the most attractive of all dwellings of the Nishamini farms. Thomas Buckman called it the Dripping Springs. The house was demolished in 1968. The barn was a part of a much larger barn complex. Most succumbed to demolition. Fortunately, the main section of the barn was spared. The dripping springs that gave the name to Buckman's farm still slowly drips down from overhanging bank like it did for centuries. In its days, locals flocked here to gather its crystal clear spring water. According to the local lore, the notorious Doan Gang gathered here before robbing the Bucks County Treasury in Newtown in 1781. The gang stole from the treasury, of what these days, would equate to $2 million. John Tomlinson Farm. Also known as a hooped farm after its last proprietor before Tyler's. Original part of the house was probably built by Jonathan Abbott during his ownership between 1739 and 1767. John Tomlinson built the most recent part of the house during some time while he owned it, likely in 1840. Tyler's acquired it from Joseph Hooped in 1919. This large farm bank barn was used to store substantial quantities of straw. It was also used to house the horses, sheep, and cows. The gable hood over the entrance is one of the less commonly seen barn features. It's as much ornamental as it is functional. The farm of Benjamin Cooper. Blaker family owned the farm property since 1699. The farmhouse was built by Benjamin Cooper in around 1850. In 1958, the house burned down, and had to be completely rebuilt. The large wagon house still stands across the trail where Coopers kept their horse-drawn wagons. This was the farm of Paul Blaker Sr. The date stone on the gable end of the house reads 1784. It has stayed in the Blaker family all the way till George Tyler purchased it in 1919. The large barn and stables were built in 1820s. Today, it is one of the remaining four barns in the park. Leadham Farm sits just outside of the park on Newtown Richborough Road. The frame house was built in 1870 by Uriah Delaney. It was purchased by Tyler from Lydia Leadham in 1919. It was the first park office in the administration building of the Tyler State Park. The Spring Garden Mill is located on Newtown Richborough Road. 
The mill and the miller's house were built around 1819 by John Blaker. In 1862 the mill was destroyed in the fire leaving it stand as an empty stone shell for over a decade. It was brought back to life in 1878 by Jonathan Knight. In 1919 George Tyler purchased the mill and made improvements. By 1930, it served as a local feed mill, grain mill, and even a gas station. It has been the home of Langhorne Players Theatre since 1976. The covered bridge that led to the mill was built in 1872. It was one of the oldest covered bridges in the county. In the 1930s, a new bridge was built when the road was rerouted, but the old covered bridge was left in place. Unfortunately, the bridge was washed away in a devastating flood of 1955 during Hurricane Diane along with several other bridges. It is hard to believe that the Nishamini Creek water levels would rise so high. However, these debris on the abutments of the Schofield Ford Bridge, left from Hurricane Ida, serve as evidence of how relentless nature can be. The Comley Farm was located just off the Swamp Road. The house was built in 1840. The addition and new facilities were built at the end of 20th century. It is now, the Tyler State Park Office. The John Cooper Farm was one of the properties originally purchased by John Blaker Sr. Many Blaker generations farmed this land. The house was built in 1800s in two sections. At one point, this was a thriving farm with many additional structures such as barn, silo, wagon house, chicken house, and more. Many of these structures have been demolished. The wagon house persevered however, and so did the foundation of the silo and the barn. The original section of Joshua Blaker Farm was built around 1823 by one of the Blaker ancestors, and the larger section was added in 1855 by Joshua Blaker. Joshua left his farmland to his 26 heirs. They sold their rights to the property to George Tyler by 1920. This house was one of the farmhouses bought from the Blaker heirs by George Tyler. It was built in about 1830. Many structures of the Nishamini farms have been lost to demolition over the years. Some are now gone entirely without a trace others, are just remnants that serve as evidence of their former existence. A Grant farmhouse once stood here that was known as David Dickey Farm. Only the brownstone entrance to the cold vault remains visible today. This stone wall was once a part of a bustling cooper mill. Now, it is just a pile of rocks that most would not even notice along the nature trail. The remaining historic Nishamini Farms dwellings survive through leasing agreements, allowing tenants to offset their rent with improvements and major repairs. However, caring for these old homes is an expensive affair, and today several stand vacant with their future uncertain.